I'm here with Hubert Ritter in Berlin and he treats patients with rolfing and he has written a book about it. Thanks for having me today. Thank you too. Um, fascia are parts of the connective tissue. Why are they so important? Fascia wrap and connect everything, all structures in the human body, every muscle, every organ has a fascial wrapping. Uh, and the fascia gives our body its shape and supports it. So they're very important uh, to give the body support. At the same time, they're elastic and act as shock absorbers. Um, they're also uh, responsible for uh, making organs and muscles glide on each other. Um, and at the same time, they're highly innervated uh, with nerve endings, so they also form a communications network in the body. And you say that those fascia can stick together and can get some kind of glued. Glued. Yeah, so, so why is that a problem? Um, it's a problem because wherever uh, fascia becomes stuck and glued, there is a lack of motion, of movement, and where there is no movement, there is pain. And why do they get glued in the first place? Uh, fascia get glued uh, or hardened whenever there's a lack of movement or when they are under constant stress. And with rolfing, you can loose them up again? Yes, uh, we, with our hands, we loosen the restrictions in the fascia. Uh, but we don't just loosen them, we also uh, move the fascia in the direction of more alignment so the, that the entire body becomes better organized and better aligned. And what kind of symptoms can you treat with rolfing? Um, rolfing uh, can help with all kinds of uh, problems in the locomotor system as back pain, neck, shoulder, knee pain, but it can also uh, be used preventively. Uh, a body that has resilient fascia and is well aligned will be less susceptible to injury and, and pain. Okay. Rolfing treatment always starts with a structural analysis, that means we look at the patient in walking and try to see where has the fascia shortened and thickened. So um, please just walk back and forth here a couple of times. Um, and um, the first thing I notice is that the hips are shifted forward slightly and the upper body is leaning back a little bit. Um, that leads to a shortening in the chest and the head and neck are being pulled forward uh, and down a little bit. But her problems are located here in the back here and in the neck and you say that uh, they arise from a shortage here in the front pail. Exactly, that what, that's what typically happens is that the shortness is on one side and the other side needs to compensate. That means there's additional tension there to hold on to the neck and that's where the overload occurs and the pain uh, starts to happen. Okay, and now you can start therapy. Yes. Okay, that's what we do. The first thing I'm going to do here is uh, try to reposition the hips. So I bring the knee up and use pressure of my shoulder to push through the thigh into the hip and make the hip go back a little bit. So can you actually feel the fascia be beneath your hands? I can feel it through the skin. Okay. I can feel places where it's stuck or where yeah, it's right. hardened or where it's glued together okay. and I try to release those places but not just release them but also reposition the fascia. Is it so painful? We try to respect the pain threshold of, uh, of the patient. Uh, it's very important because um, if, uh, if there is too much pain then the organism will recoil and right. will not open up and uh, we will not create more length but the body will shorten and, and, and tighten so it's very important to uh, take that into account and respect the limits of the individual yeah. person. So, so right now you're focusing on the posture and, and you're treating the right leg but still there's some pain in the neck so do you treat in this region as well? We always treat uh, the entire body so um, after having repositioned the hip uh, a little bit, I'm going to go up to the chest. Okay. Um, I place my hand under the back here to support and lift up the chest a little bit. And with the other hand, 
I can now lengthen the fascia on the front of the thorax. Okay. We got a lot of viewer questions, like from Tanir Banerjee from India. He has some pain in his shoulders for about nine years, um, ever since he had an accident. And, and now he wants to know if treating the fascia could help him. As a result of injuries, uh, fascia typically hardens and thickens and it becomes glued together. Um, and this can uh, develop into a vicious cycle uh, so that stiffness can itself produce pain. Um, and uh, by releasing the fascia, we can sometimes break that cycle because we introduce uh, movement and adequate range of motion. Right. And then uh, sometimes we can improve the situation even after, uh, after years. And, and as a patient, can, can I do the therapy by myself? So, like pressing on the fascias and, mm. and, or using a fascia roll, for instance? It's hard to do it on yourself with your hands because often it's places are hard to reach. Um, but you can use a fascia roll, which is an excellent tool, tool for self-help. Um, it's just important to uh, respect your limits and uh, not overdo it. So don't go beyond the thre pain threshold.